Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Why do players unretire? After playing this violent sport and hanging it up, why do some people come back to give it another go? Some just need a season to let their body heal. Some just miss the game too much and they can't live without it. Some left the league to do something else, like spend more time with their family or pursue other business ventures, and it didn't quite work out like they thought it would. Some left because they were in an undesirable situation, whether it be with a coach or a front office member, and now that things have changed, they're open to coming back. Whatever the case, we've seen plenty of players leave the game, only to come back a year or two later. Heck, we just saw Rob Gronkowski and Jason Witten do this in 2020. It wasn't the first time, and it won't be the last. However, there's a player who decided to unretire because he watched a movie. Imagine watching a film, and then immediately after watching the film, deciding that you want to play football again. Well, that's exactly what happened with Hall of Fame linebacker Sam Huff. And this is the bizarre story behind the time that he unretired from the game. Before I talk about the incident in question, we need some context as to just who Sam Huff is. Nowadays, there are plenty of defensive players in the league like J.J. Watt and Aaron Donald who are superstars. But if you ask people who the first defensive superstar in NFL history was, and the first household name to play that side of the ball, odds are, most people would say it's this guy right here. Sam Huff is one of the greatest defensive players of all time, and many people trace the modern middle linebacker position back to him. Following a great career at West Virginia, where he played so well that he got his number retired, Huff was drafted in the third round of the 1956 NFL Draft by the New York Giants. Things started out a bit rough, as head coach Jim Lee Howell didn't really know where to play him and he thought about quitting football altogether before being talked out of it by a little-known assistant coach that you may have heard of named Vince Lombardi. He's going to play a critical part in our story in just a few minutes. And after teammate Ray Beck got injured, Huff was inserted into the starting lineup as a rookie. From there, he quickly established himself as one of the top defenders in all of football. In his first six seasons, Huff was named a Pro Bowler four times with the Giants, was named a first-team All-Pro twice, and was named a second-team All-Pro twice. And despite only playing four years in the 1950s, his play was so good in that stretch that he was named a member of the All-Decade Team. Of course, something would happen in 1960 that would elevate him from just a football star to an American sports star. Because that year, CBS would air a 30-minute documentary that changed everything. The Violent World of Sam Huff was narrated by Walter Cronkite, and it showed Huff as a physical linebacker. It truly displayed the violent nature of football. And not only that, but Huff was mic'd up. The documentary was well received and it helped to grow the game. Football was already growing in popularity by this point due to the advent of television, and this documentary helped speed that process up. And while Huff would continue to dominate and reinvent the middle linebacker position throughout the 1960s, eventually, as is the case with all players who play this sport, his career would come to an end. In 1964, Huff was traded from New York to Washington. It was a trade that was widely panned at the time. That was a trade that many say was the primary reason why the New York Giants went from making three straight NFL championships to being a league-wide laughingstock in the mid-1960s. Huff never forgave head coach Allie Sherman for trading him, and has publicly stated many times how much he despised Sherman for letting him go. However, even though he was in a different uniform, he was still a great linebacker. During his first year of the nation's capital, in 1964 he was named a Pro Bowler. He received some all-conference nomination from the Sporting News for his efforts in 1964 and 1965 and he had developed a reputation as not just a violent hitter, but as an Iron Man, playing in every single game. Midway through the 1967 season, he had played in 157 consecutive games, having never missed any action. That all changed on October 22, 1967, when Huff injured his right ankle in a 28-28 tie against the Los Angeles Rams. After that injury, he would miss the next four games, making it the first time in his 12-year career at that point that he ever missed a game. And before the 1967 season ended, Huff announced that he was going to be hanging it up at the end of the year and calling it quits. Maybe it's because he had a full-time job lined up at a major textile firm that he was working with on a part-time basis in the off-season. Maybe it's because he was getting up there in age. Maybe it's because of the injury and his natural decline in play. Maybe it was a combination of all three or something else that wasn't entirely documented. Whatever the case, he was clearly emotional about this. He said there comes a time in every athlete's life where he has to hang up his jersey. That time has come for me. Then, in front of a crowd of reporters, he sat at his locker and cried for 15 minutes. On December 17th, Washington played New Orleans in the final game of the regular season. And after a 30-14 loss, that was it. Huff was never going to play professional football again. By the summer of 1968, Huff was settling into his role as the sales manager of J.P. Stevens, a suits company. However, with the benefit of hindsight, 
Just reading some of the things he said that summer, he didn't seem like he was completely ready to leave football behind. He called announcing his retirement the hardest thing he had to do, and that it didn't sink in until he never got the letter and the contract in the mail that went to report to training camp. He never said anything along the lines of it was time to go and I had a great career, but rather that he had a good job waiting for him and that football meant everything to him. You could just sense that he was itching to come back. And while he sat out the 1968 season, later in the year, a movie came out that would change his mind. In 1968, a 30-minute motivational film came out called Second Effort. The whole thing is available on YouTube for free if you want to check it out, and I will leave a link in the description. However, the motivational film starred a man by the name of Vince Lombardi. The premise of the film is really simple. A salesman is trying to pitch Lombardi on a deal, and Lombardi becomes upset that the salesman can't close the deal. From there, Lombardi gives the salesman pointers, teaches him how he built the Green Bay Packers into the ultimate dynasty of the 1960s, and the tips and tricks he used that aren't just applicable to winning football games, but rather winning at life itself. There's a lot of really great insight in there, so if you like Lombardi, go check it out. And during the 1968 offseason, Lombardi decided to come out of retirement and become Washington's next head coach. Huff already knew of Lombardi from his time with the Giants. Remember from earlier that Lombardi was the man who convinced Huff to not walk away from camp as a rookie. But just because Lombardi was there didn't mean that Huff was going to come back. He was going to be 35 years old, which to be a contributor at that age on defense back then, and at middle linebacker of all positions, was going to be tough. Especially after a year away from the game with no conditioning. Huff didn't immediately unretire after the announcement of Lombardi becoming the new head coach. Then he watched Second Effort. He watched the 30-minute film. It seemed right up his alley. It starred Lombardi, a man he looked up to. It was about sales, which was his current job. And it was also about football, which was his passion. And after watching that film, he was mesmerized. He was blown away and realized that he had to come out of retirement and play for Lombardi. Almost immediately, he announced that he was coming back. He said there was no way to keep me off this team. He's the greatest coach in football history. And the main reason why he came back? The movie. Huff not only cited the movie in that press conference as the catalyst for his return, but added, this is my second effort. Just like that, Sam Huff was about to get another swan song. When Huff came back to Washington in 1969, he was brought on as a player coach. The schedule was intense. He would not only practice and participate in the two-a-day drills, and not only would attend all player meetings, but would attend all coaches' meetings as well going from 7 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. And it wasn't easy. Far from it, in fact. During the preseason, he got discouraged with his conditioning, and thought about retiring again once he realized that father time was catching up to him. As he said, I really thought I made a mistake coming back. I felt slow. All the other linebackers were outrunning me. And of course, I've always taken a lot of pride in my quickness and speed. Now I was always last coming off the ball. I thought maybe it was the year's layoff and the fact that I was a year older. I thought they might have taken their toll. However, Huff stuck with it and eventually became Washington's starting middle linebacker, playing in every game and starting 10 of the 14 on the schedule. He scored a pick six against Philadelphia, which was the first and only touchdown of his entire career in Washington, and he helped guide Washington to his 7-5-2 record, which was the first time they finished above 500 since 1955, and just the third time this happened since the NFL-AAFC merger. All in all, he did about everything you could expect of a 35-year-old middle linebacker who hadn't played in over a year. Following the 1969 season, Huff hung it up for good. He was aching towards the end of the season and said that at the age of 35, you start getting beat up and you don't recover quite as fast. At least he was able to hang it up on a winning team, playing for maybe the greatest coach that the sport had ever seen. And in 1982, after nearly a decade of waiting for some inexplicable reason, he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, forever enshrined in canon. Seriously, it never should have taken Huff that long to get in considering how much he changed the middle linebacker position. However, it's crazy to think about how much a movie changed NFL history. If it wasn't for the 30-minute film, Huff never returns to Washington, and maybe Lombardi's remarkable stat about never finishing below 500 is in jeopardy. Lombardi himself said that Huff was the glue that held that team together, and that without him, the team would be infinitely worse. Second effort motivated a lot of people across a lot of different fields, but perhaps the most notable person to be impacted by Lombardi's movie was a man that Lombardi would wind up coaching. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Monday and Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar Gator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. 
Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.